What up, YouTube? Today we're going to be doing the first test with the oscilloscope, the relative compression test. Stay tuned. Okay, so before we get started, I want to go over a couple things as far as why would someone want to do a relative compression test. And for today's test, we're not going to be syncing it up to anything. We're doing just the bare bones relative compression test. And the reason you may want to perform this test is if you suspect that you have low compression on one or more cylinders. So you're going to want to do this test basically the same time that you would want to do a regular compression test is when you would want to do a relative compression test. So let's go under the hood and we'll talk some more. All right, so here's my van. This is a 2006 Chrysler Town & Country with a 3.8 liter V6. So if we suspected that we had a bad uh, cylinder or low compression on one or more cylinders and we didn't have a scope, we would have to do a regular compression test on each individual cylinder one at a time and see what the pressures are on those cylinders. So we would have to take out each spark plug wire one by one each spark plug one by one, and that's just the front three. We'd have to screw in a hose for our compression gauge, have the gauge connected, make sure it's not gonna start by disabling the fuel system. We'd have to push down on the gas pedal to keep the throttle open all the way, and then we'd have to crank it over for a few seconds until it basically reaches its maximum pressure on the gauge. Then we would have to repeat that five more times for the rest of the cylinders. Now on this vehicle, the front three cylinders are relatively easy to get to, but those back three cylinders, not so much. I mean, I'll do my best to bring the camera in there. You can kind of see at least a couple of them and part of the third one there. So, I mean, you're gonna be reaching down in there. You're gonna have a hard time doing that. I mean, it's not impossible. It's definitely not the end of the world but it's gonna probably take you, even some of the best mechanics, it's probably gonna take 30 to 45 minutes to do that. So you would do a relative compression test to basically determine is a cylinder low at all, and if so, then you can go to determining, you know, which cylinder it actually is. And then if you want to get actual numbers, you can, of course, later on go back and do a real compression test. But the relative compression test basically just tells you, is there a cylinder that's low? And, you know, how much lower is it than the rest of them relatively? You're going to be looking at a waveform, and it's going to be... A bunch of ups and downs, almost like triangles with no bottoms, or uh, if it's upside down, you know, the going down and the going back up part of the waveform, that would look like a triangle that's upside down with no top. It's basically a zigzag going across the screen, and we're going to want to make sure that all of our peaks are relatively at the same height. So that enables us to do a compression test without having to pull any parts of the engine apart. It makes it significantly faster for diagnostics. And when you're in the shop getting paid flat rate, it's in your best interest to diagnose the vehicle as quickly and efficiently as possible. So that's why today we're going to be learning the relative compression test so that you can get the diagnostic done faster and get to the repair more quickly. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so on my vehicle, the first thing we're going to want to do is prevent the vehicle from starting. The best way to do that in most cases is to pull the fuel pump relay. So in this case, that's this one right here. If you look real close, it says fuel pump relay. That's this one right here that we just took out. So I'm going to set that here. And we're going to place this off to the side. Now we can crank over the vehicle until it acts like it doesn't want to start anymore. This vehicle also has one ignition coil that powers the entire engine. You can also come back here and disconnect the electrical connector for the ignition coil to disable the ignition from starting the engine. However, I would strongly recommend using the fuel pump relay instead because if you do do the ignition method, you're still going to be spraying fuel into the engine that will be unburned and it's bad for your catalytic converter. So disable the fuel instead of the ignition whenever possible. Hey, I just started it up for a second and now it doesn't want to start because it's, it's not getting any gas. We've removed the fuel pump relay. 
So now we can proceed with the test. All right, so first we want to get our scope equipment set up. First thing you want to do is get your screen ready to go. In my case, I'm using the Top Don Phoenix Light 2 because my scope works with this scan tool. However, your scan tool may be a PC-based, or excuse me, your oscilloscope may be PC-based, and therefore you will be using a laptop instead of a scan tool. So I have my scan tool turned on and loaded up. Now I'm going to connect the scope. Okay, so we've got the Top Don Phoenix scope out here. We've got the cord plugged into it. And now I'm going to plug it into the scan tool. And then that is going to open up our scope screen here. And then we want to finish setting up the rest of our equipment. Okay, so we've got our amp clamp here. I'm going to be using an Autel one. This is a 650 amp uh, amp clamp. And so now we're just going to want to take the connector and we're going to want to find our channel one on the scope and we're going to want to go ahead and plug it in. Okay, so now that we're all connected, we want to go to our channel one and let it know that we're using the amp clamp. And I'm pretty sure that this is the one that we want to use here. I'm pretty sure we want it on DC, we want it on current, we don't want it inverted. So I think that's going to be the settings that we want here. So I wanted to take a second and interrupt the video here to let you know that the settings I just chose are actually incorrect. According to a little bit more research that I did, many people are actually selecting to couple with voltage and selecting to use your regular red and black leads like you would to check for voltage instead of selecting the amp clamp. So instead of selecting DC coupling and um, the amp clamp, you actually want to select AC voltage and your regular leads even though you are using the amp clamp. Clamp. You still don't want the waveform to be inverted, but I just wanted to stop the video here and mention that that the settings I had were incorrect because I was not quite familiar with my scope software yet. Now back to the video. So now I believe that we can hit single sequence and then we'll go ahead and connect our amp clamp. So on the amp clamp, there's an arrow on it. And you want that arrow to be going in the direction of the current flow. So in this case, the, cu the current is going to go from the battery elsewhere. So we basically want this arrow to point away from the battery. It's going to be a little difficult to uh, clamp that on there just because of this... Uh, there we go. That drain for my wipers is kind of in the way. So now that we're hooked up, we should be able to run this test. And once again, I do sincerely apologize for the glare on my screen. Also, it's facing away from us now, but there's a switch on there. And you definitely want to not forget to turn your amp clamp on before you run the test. So this next test right here is after I discovered that you needed to use voltage, not amperage for the test. And I had a helper crank the engine over for me, and here's the results that I got. All right, go ahead. Right on. That is a good waveform. All right, go ahead and stop. Thank you. All right, so I uh, thought this test would be a little simpler than it actually has been. And it's not so much the equipment itself, it's more so the software that I'm working with. I know that these top Don scopes are relatively new and the uh, software, I'm just uh, really new and trying to figure it all out. So. I got my settings here, and once again, I do apologize for the glare, but I've got it on 50 millivolts for the uh, volt setting, and then I ended up using the Trigger S1 Lin Synchrizing 
um, and that seemed to work and then if you hit single sequence that'll do a full page and then I got my page set to like a two and a half second screen right now so if I hit single sequence that'll go away and it's ready to um, basically record a new waveform or you can hit uh, wait and then it'll go to uh, run and then that's like a continuous measurement so since I don't have anybody really out here to help me I'm hitting a single sequence and now it should wait for me to crank so we're back out here like I said this a couple days later I've had to do a bit of research on this more so uh, the software I've just had to kind of mess around with it uh, found out we can use the negative as well as long as the uh, arrow is still pointing the right way so power goes out of the battery through the positive and back into the battery through the negative so we have it pointing back towards the battery like it should be so we're good there and then we got it on the setting one millivolt equals one amp and we're probably going to get like two to three hundred amps maybe four pulled off of the battery during cranking so i believe our screen here uh, we should see, you know, roughly two, three hundred millivolts or something like that. So I believe I finally have everything set up. Sorry for the focus and definitely sorry for the glare. And uh, I may, like I said, try to record one of these waveforms and post it up on the video if I could figure out how to do that. So anyway, we're going to go here and uh, crank her over and see if we can get a waveform it does seem a little delayed on the single sequence it doesn't show up on the screen until it's totally done but i got my foot down on the gas all the way we're going to crank it over for a few seconds here and then that should be enough to give us what we're looking for yep it's not across the whole screen, but we can kind of see what we're looking for. So that's the idea behind this test here, is all of those peaks, we kind of want them to be relatively similar and it looks like they are for the most part and i've been cranking this back and forth quite a bit so uh the battery may be draining down just a little bit but the idea is to get a waveform that looks like this so if your waveform doesn't look like this and you're only seeing you know three or four uh like basically if you see a missing one then you know that there's a problem there so um that's basically the relative compression test i uh sorry once again that uh i'm not super familiar with my own scope software to be totally honest this is my first time doing the relative compression test with the amp clamp so um, just uh, kind of learning and teaching as I go. I thought this would be some good video content for some of you who may be in the same position as me, who have the top Don scope and are a little confused with the software like I was as well and not super uh, familiar with how to set it up. Or if you're just new to scopes in general, uh, this may help you. Um, you just may have to do a bit of research on the software that you're using and it may take a little bit of trial and error as it has with me. But here we have a good relative compression test performed on my work van. And ideally, now that we know how to sort of set everything up, it should be easier from this point forward. If you know where all your stuff is, you know what stuff in the kit you're gonna need for that specific test, then you're gonna be able to do this much more quickly. This video took me about three days of messing around with this, obviously not three days straight, but like after work or in between jobs, I'm pulling this equipment out and just trying to familiarize myself with it a little bit more. And uh, if you're new to scopes uh, like I am, and you really want to up your game in the automotive field then I suggest that you do the same okay so for the final part of the video I don't think I'd be doing the best video that I could if I didn't show what a bad waveform looks like and I also want to 
quickly mention that although this is my first time actually performing this test physically, I have done plenty of research and watched plenty of videos on the test itself to be very familiar with the idea of the test and what we're actually trying to accomplish here, as well as how to set up your equipment. The majority of the obstacle for me was simply the software. Some of you may be using a Pico scope, which from what I've heard the software is very user friendly so hopefully you'll be able to figure that out so anyway um, I've gone ahead and removed a spark plug here I'm not sure which cylinder that is I know this one's cylinder six so it might be cylinder four uh, but anyways um, now we're gonna do a waveform with a bad cylinder with a cylinder that has absolutely no compression so that you can see what a bad one looks like all right we're back in the car got our foot on the gas we're gonna crank it and I know you guys can see that high mileage we got working there that's that work van life right there getting high up in the mileage Anyway, let's go check our waveform. Some of you may have even been able to hear the difference. Okay, and so that's what our waveform looks like there. You can see that it kind of goes from this side of my phone. It goes one, two, three, four, five, miss. One, two, three, four, five, miss. That one where it spikes down super hard is the missing um, the missing peak that we're looking for and you can see that that's reoccurring across the waveform so if you're seeing a waveform that looks like this then you can be pretty certain that you have low compression in one or more cylinders and obviously we do because we removed a spark plug so that's what a bad waveform would look like and that's going to be the end of the video for today guys i hope you all enjoyed if you learned something please leave a like on the video that helps me out tremendously also if you are trying to do this test and you have any questions feel free to leave them in the comments below and i'll try to help you out as much as i can also if you haven't already please consider subscribing to the channel we're trying to hit 3,000 subscribers by the end of the year also stay tuned for the next oscilloscope video where we'll be syncing up a second channel to either a spark plug wire or something that will enable us to determine which cylinder is which while we're doing the test and that will give us even more information than we got with this test otherwise I will see you next time